Wow, Mr. Daglish. So nice to Hello. meet you. Wow, you're so young. What? Certainly not. <laughs> Most of the people who have an interest are all much, much older. And, and I don't know if that's just, I don't know, a cultural thing or something that they're like, okay, now that I'm coming to the end, I might as well figure out who I am. I think there's a lot of that, yeah. I, I figured that to Sarah Jane, I am a first cousin three times removed. I haven't gone any further than that. So I want to hear what got you excited about this in the first place. How do you hear about Sarah? How do you hear about all of this? Oh, wow. Well, um, talking about people getting an interest when they get older, mm -hmm. I guess that's me, really. Um, my Daglish family side is really odd. Um, my father died when I was 12. Oh. But, that, but that's because I arrived really late in his life. In fact, I wasn't really planned at all. So I have a, I, I have a sister who's 10 years older. I had another uh, sister who died who was 10 years beyond that. And then my father was married before. So I have, or I had, uh, twin half-brothers and a half-sister who were 30 years older than me. Whoa! So oh, okay, so you're <laughs> coming in. in so the beginning. I, I really didn't know my father that well, to be honest. Um, and you carry on, and you get on with your life and things. And it was only really much later. It was really about fifteen years ago that, in fact, my wife's cousin, who comes from New Zealand, and like all New Zealanders, when they come to the UK, they come and stay with you for weeks and weeks and weeks yeah, on yeah. end. Um, but he was really into genealogy uh, and did all my wife's family side. So he kept saying, you, you really want to you really know more about this. Um, so he was convincing you to yeah. figure out your family. Absolutely. So I thought, okay. So we had a, had a, had a chat with my half-sister and she said, this will interest you. She said, you know what? Somewhere there's a diary that one of our ancestors wrote. I think Aunt Dolly's got it. I'll get her to dig it out. Lo and behold, about two weeks later in the post, there's this book from, uh, I think it was, I'd have to check, but it's written around about 1820, something like that. Okay. And it was written by John Daglish, who was, whose father was also the father of William, who is Sarah Jane's father. Right. <laughs> So interestingly, he had, um, uh, his story was he had moved to France and he had, he had a, a young lady move to France with him and they got married in France. They had a daughter and then she was pregnant again and they decided to come back to London for the birth. Mm -hmm. However, Basically, both the, 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 the wife and the child died in childbirth. So he lost them both. And now he's stuck in London. So he's in London, hmm. feeling very sorry for himself. And he wrote this long, long diary. So there's a, there's a, there's a thing about writing diaries somewhere in the family. Yeah. A, f a couple of years later, he's remarried and, and all the rest of it, which is, which is where my line comes from. Mm -hmm. um, but having got that diary, um, <laughs> interestingly, the aunt who had it had taped down the, the front pages and the back pages to the boards at the front of them. Okay. And I thought, well, what's going on here? So um, it was all falling apart. So we figured we were going to have it re rebound anyway. Mm -hmm. So we prized it apart. And on the front thing, the, the thing she'd covered up was he'd done a kind of death mask picture very accomplished of his wife. And the, the art obviously thought this was horrible. So had that concealed. Wow. On the back, I don't know why this was all glued down, but were some contact names. So within the book, he'd done a little kind of mini family history. So for all of his brothers and his parents, he'd put all the dates of birth, all the dates of marriage, all the dates of death. Yeah. So, and this is where the first, this is the first time I ever got any inkling 
of anybody going to America. Because in the death, it has William, so that's his brother. So it just says, William, I, can't remember, I think he was born in Newcastle, but it just said, died, 1849, Kentucky. And actually, I've never found out where that death in Kentucky, uh, apart from the fact it says so in this book. If he was in Kentucky, he'd end up with the Rousseau's kind of as mm. a, we'll just take you in. I, this makes no sense. He would have no. I, I can't, no, I mean, I've found nothing to co- corroborate that at all, mm-hmm. but no alternative either. So I looked through those graves and I've asked people on foot to look for those graves that it says on the plantation they were put um, out by the bay or out by the, mm-hmm. the mouth of the river. And I finally got someone from the historical society who said, you know, that was taken over through through the Civil War. They when they took over on the property, so the Confederates took over the property for a moment, and then the Union took over the property for a moment. And they said that was a really good position for cannon fire, for camp. I mean, that was a really, that was a stronghold. And so they said, if there was a grave there or gravestones or whatever, we're talking trampled on. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't know where they are. There's no markings. There's nothing. But what, what I found out was really cool is that they had, um, I was, I was upset that, they let the Confederates let, you know, you don't let the army take over your home. But I was upset that the Confederates came in and, and uh, camped on their land. And I said, you know, I guess Kentucky's wishy-washy at this point in the war and who knows where they stood. And I was able to find out they freed their slaves years before the Civil War ever happened. Okay. And the only people living there with them, they had a, a family of four living with them. They, they were servants but employees they were employees of the family that chose to stay with them Mm. anyways Mm. so i really man i appreciated hearing that but on the back on this board there's then then there was a load of con it was like an address uh, uh, an early 19th century address book so it's where they all were so in 1820 then uh he's got william in saginaw in -hmm. michigan yeah, yeah, with, with so, uh, Marianne. She's, yeah. there, she's married the mayor or who, whoever, hoity-toity. And she Judge, Al- Judge Albert Miller, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but she becomes nothing. I think in my head, oh, you're married to a somebody who literally creates hey. a piece of land, and you're a, she becomes a nothing. There's I no- have to defend her. Oh, this. tell me more, tell me more. What do you know? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, having found that out, we started... I. I I thought, okay, we've got to find about this. So uh, as a first step, I just, I think I emailed the, I don't know, the library or something in Saginaw and said, and they said, oh, we got loads of stuff. Um, and on their website, it kind of said, send us a dollar and we'll send you what we've got. And sure enough, again, a couple of weeks later, this, this thing about this thick comes through the mail. And they've copied everything they've got. Mostly about Judge Albert Miller, this guy who mentioned so anyway, a couple of years later, we decided we'd just go on vacation to, to Bay City, which is where they, where they really, they, they, I mean, they were in Saginaw for a while, but they really established themselves in Bay City. So we went had a little, a little vacation there, uh, which was fascinating. But where, um, where Mary's name came up, because the Daglish lot were always Methodists, in the UK there was always this thing that she had started the local Methodist church there and we just sort of went and had a look around the area and of course well we found out later why there's there's nothing there but there is a very modern Methodist church there so I was just prowling around like you do and the lady popped her head out and said can I help you and she was the minister or whatever and so we told her this tale and she said oh We've got something here. It might be interesting for you. And on the wall, they have this indenture, this legal document, okay. which is where, which is signed by Mary, and it was gifting the land on which the church stood, and giving them funds to build the original church. So that was her. That's what she did. Meanwhile, her husband had built the big church up in the town, and so everybody associates it with that. But when we went to the local museum and stuff, 
they had got down that he built the Methodist church as well. So I think, no, that's, yeah. not, that's not right. Um, so she did her own thing there. Um, I mean, she was quite well connected in the town. They had, the really frustrating thing is they had two lovely oil portraits of them both. I know this. Uh, but but the, one, the one of him is on display. Yes. The one of her is in the basement. Wait, in the basement of the church? No, in the basement of the local museum. So I said, right, well, I want to see that. So they did go and get it out. <laughs> I said, don't you think it would be, these were obviously done contemporaneously at the same time. Don't you think it would be nice to hang him and her? Yeah. Not just him. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think they ever did it. I think we're back in the basement. I mean, there was some interesting stuff, really interesting stuff for me there. It, it never comes out of the shipping records or anything, but it, it, pre, it showed that his, no, John's son, so going that, back to my great, yeah, my great grandfather, that he had been sent out to Bay City, presumably to learn about business and things as a very young man, and spent three years there. And it's between the censuses in the UK. So that census is in London, that census is in London. Nothing in the shipping records to say he's ever yeah. <laughs> slipped across the Atlantic and back. But there he was. I mean, it's quite clearly him. And even stuff that he'd written from there. Oh, that's interesting. So they've got a really nice collection there. But what, what, had, what had happened was then an uncle came out, a James Daglish came out. And on the one hand, he was quite smart. And on the other hand, he was not smart at all. Because he, they built up, there's an area called Portsmouth. Right. Which is sort of south of the main city. And there's an area in that known as the Daglish Platte or whatever. And it, it, it was quite large. And that, that actually included the bit that the Methodist church is on. But what happened... From Marianne. Yeah. What happened? There was, there was this huge fire and it raged through the whole of that part of the city, raised the whole lot to the ground, and somebody had forgotten to actually insure it. <sighs> and so one minute, one day they've got a nice little fortune... The next day, they're bankrupt. <laughs> oh, no. So who's, and, who's James? Is that one of William? He was, he, oh, gosh, who is he? Or John's um, sons or a, a different yeah, cousin? Yeah, I think, he's, I think he's one of John's sons. I'd, I'd have to, I, there are so many Jameses, I get totally yeah. confused. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so, so, so that was all quite interesting. I mean, the other thing about my Daglish line is we are useless at um, creating male <laughs> heirs or whatever. It's a really thin, 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 thin line all the way down. We either have quite a lot of girls and not many boys. And if we have boys, they tend not to, they, a lot of them don't t tend not to have children at all. In fact, my son <laughs> is the last chance we've got to carry the name on. <laughs> I keep telling his partner and him this, but there's nothing happened so far. Um, <laughs> It's a really weird thing. So that there's really there's not a lot of not a lot of us around, quite honestly, and that's always been the case. Wow. They tend to have quite a lot of children, but they don't create boys to carry the name on. I think weird. I where William is a tailor. Yeah, there was there, there was a, a several of them were tailors. I mean, it's quite. I've never figured out exactly. Um, we're going right back. We think that the name spelt the way we spell it uh, originates in the northeast of England. So I think Newcastle upon Tyne is mentioned in the diary. Yeah. They, they met somebody they knew from, from there. So going back, there's a little, a little village which is southeast of Newcastle. So it's around, I don't know, five miles the other side of the River Tyne. What's the difference the in the spelling? Well, it goes back to the Scottish spelling. So the Scottish spelling is Dalgleish. With the E in there. So, well, yeah, and also it's got an, an initial L, so it's Dalgleish rather than Daglish. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty convinced, but can't prove it, that what you see is turning up in the parish registers of this place called Wickham um, in uh, the mid 1500s you suddenly see the name turn up. 
And the, the thing about this village is it was all about coal mining. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Cambridge University in the UK, back in the 70s, some guys wrote a really thick 700 page book and mm -hmm. described it as the first industrial village because they were always finding ways. I mean, Newcastle's known for its coal, but they were always getting finding ways of getting to the coal and getting it down to the river and shipping it out and so on. And certainly at that time, so the, Scot the Scottish name Dalgleish is just across the Scottish border mm -hmm. uh, and Newcastle's just the English side of the border. So there's a big range of hills in the middle, but not a lot of distance, probably only about 40 miles distance. And certainly the book confirms that around about this time, the, the sort of 1530s to 1560s, they were bringing in a lot of Scottish labourers to do the mining. Mm. So I'm pretty sure that the, the, it looks like probably two brothers came across with their families, pretty much went, down, had their, went back down to the local church to have their children baptised, Probably couldn't read and write. Yeah, what's your well, name? Probably oh, said, you know said yeah, what's that this strange accent? Can't quite yeah. hear it. So when the first vicar was there, it was kind of all over the place. When the next guy comes in, he wrote it down, D-A-G-L-I-S-H. And from that moment forward, next 400 years or whatever, yeah. that's how it's spelled. Yeah. Um, D doing DNA, now if you speak to most, of the, I mean, there's still a lot of Daglishes in Newcastle upon time. Uh, and if you go and talk to the most of them, they'll say, we're nothing to do with that Scottish lot. No. Unfortunately, if you take their DNA and you take the DNA of that Scottish lot, they're pretty much the same. So I figured that if you studied them all and tried to reconstruct all the different families you might figure out who's who and from going on to that then we started finding that so I found about three other sort of Daglish researchers so there's a guy in Liverpool and those Daglishes which also we can trace back to the same village so it's another line so they are related yeah um but he had been studying them for about 25 years they they were very famous engineers a great engineering family so basically, I suppose it's one Christmas, probably about 12 years ago now, we saw well, there's these Y DNA tests. So it's the, one, it's the ones that trace the male chromosome, mm -hmm. which in theory but gets passed unchanged from father to son, father to son. To son. And although we, we still to this day can't prove on through documents that we are related, the DNA came back basically identical on all of them. So they were, Ooh, perhaps there is something in this after all. So we just extended and extended. I think we've probably done about 20 or 30 Daglishes and then done about 10 or 12 Dalglishes. And you obviously get the odd ones because if there's an illegitimacy or an adoption or something, the line's broken, you're going to get a different result. So now you created an entire blog to sort of gather those stories, not just mm. the, not the old ones, but even the current ones too, of who are we? I still, to this day try and put the families together and so and so on because i think we can say with how much 95 percent certainty perhaps that if you show me a daglish we haven't met and you find out some basic information about them a we can find we can figure out where they fit in you have all b, the other pieces and b i can almost predict if we did their dna what the result would be mm -hmm. so you can almost say that anybody who's got our spelling who's alive today we can i mean there is there there's one there's one other family which turns up in another northeast town called Morpeth, okay. which, is just, which is just to the north of Newcastle. We can't quite figure out how these two come together. And the DNA says it may be another brother turning up there. We don't know. Anyway, so that's, what, now that's how we got into it. Then somebody said, have you, have you, I've got it here. Have you seen this diary thing? Yeah. Um, Pam Greenwood. Oh, yeah, she's my friend. Yeah, so she's the one who sent it to me. So that was May the 29th, 2007. Here's my contribution to your heritage. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> what a treasure she is. She's like the you, she's, but she studied the Curtis family. So she's like one <laughs> level removed and obsessed. I mean, we're all obsessed. And she's one level removed in love she's currently reading the 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 chapters that i sent that i also sent to you 
Um, and I'm hoping she gets a big kick out of it. I, really, mm. I, I think they're great. I'm so happy you're doing that. It's brilliant. Oh, good. Yes. Okay. So tell me, what did you like? What did you think? Uh, well, obviously, I like the way it brings together the families before we get started on the. On we're gonna the put play. a lot of pressure on everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, I, I like. I mean, it, it, I can't really. I, I just like, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Wow, I love it. I'm so glad. My grandmother, she's a 96, and she stayed up until midnight. Naughty, naughty lady. She's <laughs> midnight reading them, and she says she can't wait for more. Mm. I'm, I'm excited. I feel like these characters speak to me yeah. in my dreams. And then, oh, one of my favorite moments is I made this sort of last-minute call when Israel Curtis is feeling like he's going to get caught by Dr. James, that he's, he's going to get caught. His friend now knows he's scheming and he's drinking his whiskey and he sets it down on his belly. You know, like a pregnant woman or pick up a little, and he sets his whiskey down. And I just thought, yeah, he's going to have a belly. And then later I found this news article that talks about him being fat and 40 and really? this fabulous Christian man who can't possibly tell a lie and very fully fat and i just go oh, i love it <laughs> mm. yes <laughs> so you can you, you can source some stuff that gives you some insights into the i think about them a lot i have uh, conversations with them and then uh, some of the conversations that happen in the story so far i don't think i created I think I just listened to them and I feel like I was this person watching over the scene and I felt like, Hey guys, stop, stop that. You're being mean. And I, yeah. I would just be like, they're, they're, I don't know, the mother hen watching the chicken. Da, 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 da. And so it just comes out. It's just, but I have been obsessed with them for four years. So it feels like I, I hear them now. So uh, where are you in the, in the writing process? Yeah, I mean, you've done those chapters, are you? I have not moved. Oh yes, I have moved forward. I have moved forward. Okay. You got to the point where, so I want her to just do, get on the train and go, you know? Okay. So, um, but I've written other parts beyond that. I just yeah. connect them. It's yeah. like an accordion. Yeah. But truth is better than fiction. I couldn't have made up that uh, Nicholas Herb, he had a one-eyed horse. And I just thought, <laughs> you know, put that in. That's, I, if I purposefully did that, it'd be like, why are you doing that? No, no, that's real. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's and cool. I love every character so much, but they're so bad. And they, they, they do all these contradictory things. And I just want to be like, stop, just be nice. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it and and uh, there's a collective that's beginning to follow along and they're getting interested so my heart's pounding so I'm like how much do I talk about it because I feel like I want to wait wait till the book's done and then I'll talk more so I, I worry about that but I want, to, I want it to be a movie I definitely want to get a screen uh, on it wouldn't and, that be good oh yes and I'm not saying I need to play Miss Sarah but I would like to see. there's this lady that they run into in Nebraska, I think, and she calls her uh, either either an Irish woman or a lowland Dutch. So both are like derogatory. She must be one of them. And this lady comes out because they want to park on her land to camp because there's good grass on her land. And she comes out probably with a weapon and says, get off my land. And then her and Nicholas Earp get in a fight. And I, heard, oh, I remember. I'm yeah. gonna be her. I want to be her. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be a good, good a good part. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna give him Jesse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. So for anybody who is a screenplay writer, <laughs> uh, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, and then I want these people to constantly read it specifically inner circle people. You're one of them. Pamela Green one's one of them. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you know Nick Cataldo. He did a lot of research with my uncle in America and in, Cal in San Bernardino. And he's written about him. And so now he's in the inner circle. And I said, I'm trying to gather these researchers. Mm. But if I say something and they're like, nah, that character, 
that character mm. have done that. I would have someone give me feedback that, that knows, okay. not a random reader. The random readers will, they'll come later. Sure. So what did, what did your great, 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 great grandpa do? It all becomes a bit of a, I mean, a lot of it, we don't really know. I mean, there's certainly a tailor around that time. Tailoring was a thing. Yeah. So it was a thing, <coughs> excuse me. It was a thing while they were in Newcastle because you get references to that. Certainly the London ones were, were tailors, including um, John who wrote the diary. That's what he did. And this is like, a good business. This is yeah, reputable. Yeah. This is well paid. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, they were quite comfortable. Going back beyond that, though, the mystery I've never figured, because as I say, going back to Wickham, this village, it was all about coal mining. Now, they didn't stay there long. They kept moving around that bit of the northeast. And there's nothing, there's nothing which actually tells you what they were doing, except they were, they were obviously <laughs> moving up the social scale a little bit as they went, because each place they went to was a little bit nicer than the one before. The only thing that strikes me about each place they went to was there was something quite innovative going on at the time. So they went from Wickham to a, a, the next little village is called Tanfield. But Tanfield, if you ever Google it, was, uh, is credited to be one of the birthplaces of railways because they had for years, I mean, railways themselves were around that area. And in fact, going back to my Liverpool degrees, they were right in on. All yeah, the early... we're in the Industrial Revolution. This is hot stuff. Yeah, yeah but, but before that, they had wooden wagon ways, which they took the coal down from the hills down to the river and managed to get the empty trucks back and all the rest of it. So Tanfield, which is where they moved to, was, if you read up about that, is the place where all this was going on and there's museums there and all that. So they were there just about that time. Interesting. From there, they went to a very obscure place called Aiton Banks, which is spelt differently from how it was. But again, that... The only thing that's there is an innovative railway which went up, which went up a big steep hill and they were there at that time. Mm, interesting. Then they moved across the Tyne to a place, I can't remember the name of it, oh, Shiremore. And this, is, this baffles everybody because they were clearly there uh, quite late. There's quite a lot of records of them at the local church. They certainly had all their kids baptized there, weddings taking place there. Every time they were, they put their addresses, Shiremore, Shiremore, Shiremore. So you go and talk to the local historians. So they were in Shiremore in 1790 or whatever. They, they said, no, they, they said, no, they weren't. What do you mean, no, they weren't? There's nothing there. What do you mean there's nothing? Here's a map from 1790. There's Shiremore. It's a moor. <laughs> Nobody lives there. It's in oh. hospital. Well, no. is it like writing down the general area <laughs> sort of over no here? Idea. No idea. I mean, it's just above the, the town where everything's happening, but they write down Shiremore. <laughs> Later, it becomes a big coal mine, and today there's a coal mining town there, but not, at the t not for 50 years later. They're gone by then. And then finally, they moved to a place called Lumley. Um, which was very nice. It was where the people with money went and lived. So they, 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 they lived there for a while. And then the move to London started. So um, and William moved to London. And, and this is where, theoretically, they, daughters learnt to play piano and all this yeah. malarkey. Um, so certainly John moved to London before going to France, then ended back in London. Um, so, yeah don't really know what what was going on in all those early years and then even when um i guess john's wife died and his daughters i, I don't know if they were like nine and ten or something they were they were young but they were getting to the point where you're like oh, i gotta do something with these girls mm. <laughs> they have to figure out are they going to get married are they going to be school teachers mm. what's next and so within that maturity time they are now brought to america and like mm. oh use your music skills come on girls yeah i mean I, as far as i understand it they went to new york first and then the, it looks like they were tempted by these land deals that were going on in michigan so 
and certainly something we read said that William went up there. So I think he, he, he Ma- as you say, Ma- Mary, um, yeah, Mary got married to Albert Miller and obviously stayed. So I met a researcher by the name of Morrison, and he is, uh, he likes to go and dig up in the area. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw something about that. Yes. Yeah. So he was finding little pieces of dishware yeah. from London. He was able to figure yeah. out painting, and he said, what are these doing in this piece of land and I said I know (laughs) yeah that was extraordinary oh there's a great story about um a boy who would ferry the girls in to Grandpa Jack's uh school so Mr. Rousseau's father ran a school out of the plantation and this boy would ferry them in from all the different cities through the river and I just imagine him all these pretty girls going into school and then at the end of the week go and take them all home and all these pretty girls on his little river raft and oh he has a whole story about that and yeah apparently he was a good good teacher uh, yeah so i don't know if he he put that into james's mind a bit and i and i touched on that a little in the first chapters and and later on as well of yeah you know uh, i don't want to be a teacher but later he ends yeah. up and a teacher and it's sticks my family's all teachers my grand grandma mom me my sister's a teacher we're all teachers and i've been trying to stop being a teacher for 10 years and then oh my favorite little detail about the rousseau is uh, the other brother only three brothers lived until retirement age of so some some sort so one in san bernardino one here in phoenix and the other one ends up marrying one of the infant babies on the train. So they're 30 years age different. Uh huh. The baby's there <laughs> and they're good. These people are good friends, family friends. And somehow this guy in his old age marries her when he's 70 or something. So he's, he's getting up there and that's really old at that point. He's getting up there. Yeah. He's unmarried at 30, 40. And they just are like, yeah, we're friends. Let's do this. <laughs> That just closes the loop. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Fortunately, I'm retired, but um, I, I spent, well, yeah, I spent most of my life working in the music industry, but not the creative bit, not the creative bit. It's all the sort of bits about rights and royalties and all that stuff. But um, yeah, so I, bet I spent quite a bit of time in New York, quite a bit of time in LA, but not much in the middle, really. So, mm-hmm. well, you're a delight to to talk to, and and I I've g- gathered so much information for you. I've been looking for things, and just in this conversation, you've already pointed out where where they are and how easy it is to get them. And I was talking to somebody earlier today. I mean, the the, the important oral history because yeah. he was it's interesting. He was a guy. I got involved uh, through doing all this as an organization called the Guild of One Name Studies. Strange thing. Basically, so it's a bunch of fanatical people about surnames and things. Yes. But no, somebody just wrote in. Um, I think they were from America, although I wasn't entirely sure. He said, I've just been looking. I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad your organization exists. And he said, because we've been going about 40 years. I think he said something like about 30 years ago, somebody came and interviewed my granddad about the family history and they put it on their website. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'm now a granddad and I'm now telling my, my grandchildren yeah. about the same stories and it's so good to have it preserved. Yeah. Uh, I just thought that was a lovely little story. But right. it is those, it is those things, it is, because there's another guy who does all our filming for seminars and things, but his mission in life is to go out and interview people and record it. Um, it's those family stories that, that are not things you can get from the internet. And often the stories are not exactly right, Yeah. but there's always a germ of truth in it. And if you've got that little germ of truth, you can, with other things, figure out what's going on. But if you, mm-hmm. if you lose that little key piece of information that isn't anywhere except in this person's right. memory right it's gone yeah that's why i want to establish very quickly that uh, the diary or the the diarist puts her spin on anything, of course. everything she wants of course because i want people to know that when i or if i don't know the answer to something and i'm 
hold fast to what she thought it was. That's why. This is her her version. Yeah. This is not the truth. This is her version of the truth. Of course it is. Yeah. yeah. As, a, as any diary would be. Yes, it is. I mean, I, I suppose the other... Did we ever figure out why she wrote this diary? Who she, who she was writing? Was it just... I, I, I think she was a journalist by nature. She yeah. kept diaries. Yeah. Thing. Uh, it just, it feels very personal. It does not feel like it's a guide of any sort. She doesn't write to anyone. She writes, I did this. I thought, mm. I felt this. It is very personal. Yeah. I don't agree with, some people think, oh, she was going to send it as a trail guide. I don't believe that. Uh, there was a lot more instructions on where she is and what's yeah. going on. It yeah. was personal insights. And then for some reason, it did not go to her eldest daughter. It went right. to her second daughter. So again, it's not this, here is this official record to my firstborn. It, it was, hey, this was my diary and then I died. And cool. you're local, so you got it. It's, mm. It bypasses tradition. It was personal. Yeah. So some of the things in there aren't going to make it in the book because they're personal. Mm. All of this makes my heart pound. Yeah. We'll talk again sometimes soon, I'm sure. Thank you so much. Bye, Stephen. Okay. Bye now.